What's going on, world? What's going on, Star Wars fans? Uh, so we, we got the Metacritic here, and it turns out to be a 77, though we have like a red review on some of them that could have possibly dropped it down. I wouldn't say that this is a failure, but it is disappointing. Uh, because it's a Star Wars game, uh, you know, I, I at least want you to be in the 80s, you know what I mean? Uh, and of course, there's been some controversy over this game. Not necessarily because of the game and the world, but because of the protagonist. And uh, one thing I'm going to say is, is let's go over who the developers are. Developers are Massive Entertainment, which are the Division devs. And I actually like them. I loved Division 1. I didn't love Division 2 because I thought it was kind of like the same thing and then it didn't evolve enough. As we see right here, um, Massive Entertainment games right here. You know, Division 1, Division 2, Avatar, Star Wars Outlaws, and uh, the Division 3. When I first saw this, I was like, okay... At least I know this game is going to be solid, right? Uh, because I know the Division devs very well. Uh, so that means that I don't expect groundbreaking combat, though, because they're kind of simple sometimes. What I mean by that is that Division is kind of like, I'm in this cover. Part 1 was okay with that, right? I turn around, and I get out of cover, and I shoot something. Then I get back in cover. I can do, like, the, you know, little uh, roll around. I can go up on cliffs and have my basic strafing uh going forward uh, gears movement but it's not advanced like gears i can go across rooftops but it's simple stuff you know what i mean and you're kind of going to be with that kind of template and um you know when i saw them go to division two i'm like really so i don't have no pro mode no rollover you know it, it, come on man y'all should have taken that to the next level but i know you're going to have an amazing engine the graphics going to be jaw dropping you know i, I expect a, a fun world to explore and maybe a solid story. Uh, with this game, the problem was the protagonist. You know who they should have gave us? Come on, man. How about the best smuggler in the world here? If he would have been the protagonist with the voice actor of Harrison Ford, or at least somebody else, you know what I mean? Voice actor, it doesn't matter. This game would have had a different tone uh, for Star Wars fans. Definitely for the masculine principle of Star Wars, since they're just trying to feminize it with this garbage. That pisses me off. Uh, so that would have made a more impact. You already spent so much money on the game anyways, why not go all the way in? But no, we, we had, uh, you know, that right there. And there's nothing wrong with her, but it's like, why would you do that to her? You know what I mean? <laughs> so let's take a look at some of these reviews. Then we're going to watch a live review and see uh, from somebody I know I could trust. All right, so 77 here on PlayStation. I'm kind of interested in PC, though, because that's what I would play it on. And I'd rent it, by the way. I'm not going to buy this game. Uh, so IGN, IGN, okay, Game Machines 85, Star Wars Outlaws may have a gameplay that is occasionally rough and five dozens of different upgrade materials, but it makes up for any flaw with its excellent characters, main story that always pushes you to look for the next chapter, and an unbashed love for the setting. See, my thing with this game is, it's like, I know Massic, uh, Massive Entertainment is solid to good devs, so I know they can produce a solid Star Wars game. That wasn't a problem. The problem people are complaining about is the protagonist, but that's just the surface. So we'd have to look past it and see what else is in the game. But it did exactly what I expected. You know, I was expecting around like a 78 to 82 meta. If it would have did like 82 plus, that would have been nice, but it didn't do that. So this isn't necessarily a failure, but it's a disappointment. Because we see Jedi Survivor, you know, 86, 87, but Respawn are much better developers. And I give you Cal Kestis, he's a real star wars badass you know he represents star wars but going down you know we see you know a, a lot of age about, about what i what i expected so let's, let's let's keep going down star wars outlaw fully commits to realizing the open world scoundrel experience many fans had been dreaming of and walks away unscathed which is no small feat and reinforces the idea that massive entertainment is one of the ubisoft's best studios at the moment i would think so too however it needs an extra push and boulder swings to leave a big mark on the genre that's what i felt like the game was going to be i felt like it was going to be a solid game 77 78 79 that's not bad scores but for star wars you need to be epic you need to be minimum 85 plus you know like jedi fallen order was 86 87 and survivor so this is disappointing for, as a star wars game but it's not a failure as a video game and then having that protagonist doesn't help but we see it's this is where i expected a bunch of eights and then you'll have something off the deep end like this, which kind of 
lowered it down a few points. So it would be closer to an 80, but all in all, let's see how it sells. I don't know. But let's go ahead and take a look uh, at this review right here. Now let's react a little bit, you know, to get some video uh, imaging going. Gaming Bolt's not too bad. I, I know that they'll be honest. Earlier this week, I bought myself a lightsaber. It wasn't anything special. I picked up one of those cheaper ones that I could find, but it turned out to be a decent purchase nonetheless. Its speakers produced surprisingly high quality sound effects. It let me switch the color of its blade. I could sheath and unsheath it using motion sensors. You know, the regular stuff that you'd expect from the majority of lightsaber replicas these days. But why exactly am I bringing all this up here? Because frustratingly enough, the time I spent goofing around with that lightsaber, I'm 29 before you ask, was probably a more enjoyable Star Wars experience for me than the time that I've spent with Star Wars Outlaws. That's not to say massive entertainment spacefaring action adventure title isn't a fun time, occasionally at the very least. It nails the Star Wars aesthetic. It boasts solid open world design and playing the role. But can y'all see that division template here? You see, get in out of combat, duck out, shoot, you know, do that little basic jump across the roof. You could see it's the division devs. I don't have a problem with the division devs, you know what I mean? Like I said, I think that could be solid. Uh, but when I saw that they were developing it, I knew what to expect as a foundation role of a classic Han Solo-esque Star Wars scoundrel often does feel exhilarating. The problem, however, is that Outlaw's biggest strengths are buried underneath a pile of significant issues. From technical rough edges and inconsistent writing to some age design choices and more, this is- I would expect that from them, and um, the game isn't finished, we know that. This is called Marketing Deadlines. The game that stumbles often, and in ways that aren't always easy to forgive especially when you look at the sum total of its flaws. A bad game? Certainly not, but a rough one nonetheless, and maybe not necessarily the Star Wars game that you're looking for. Exactly. Come on, I just need my data spike fixed. In Star Wars Outlaws, you play as Kay Vess, a Canto Bite local who dreams of escaping the bustling planet and making it big in the galaxy's criminal underworld. And with no one other than her adorable buddy Nyx to take care of her, there's not much that's stopping her, other than the fact that in the underworld she's not even big enough to be a small fry. Set between the events of Episodes 5 and 6, however, Outlaw's galaxy is in turmoil, which means those looking to circumvent the law and possessing the skill to do so always have plenty of work to find. The job K lands, however, lands her in hot water with one of the Why richest and most powerful syndicates in the galaxy, following which K's goal now is to keep making a name for herself in the underworld, while staying safe from the many enemies that she's made and continues to make. From the day it was released, Star Wars Outlaws has been billed by its developers as the ultimate Star Wars scoundrel fantasy, and that in particular is something that the game captures really well. From the Huts and the Pikes to the Crimson Dawn and the newly introduced Ashiga clan, Star Wars Outlaws sees Kay dealing with a number of different criminal factions, who, as you might expect, are often working against each other themselves. Watching Kay navigate the underworld and getting to actually be in charge of her attempts to successfully spin her proverbial plates is easily one of the highlights of the game. The writing here that I could expect. I expect that from uh, Massive Entertainment. It can be pretty rough from time to time, which is particularly true in many of the less important quests, usually the optional ones. But by and large, there's enjoyment to be had in the story that Outlaw tells. It helps that the gameplay reflects the game scoundrel's fantasy ambitions really well. 
if only in flashes. There's often a very improvisational vibe that. to the things that you do in the really sticky situations, whether it's firefights we're speaking of or hand-to-hand -hand duels, or even something like speeder chases. Kay is very much the sort of protagonist who thrives under pressure, using her quick thinking and varied skill set as an outlaw to great effect, especially when plans go wrong, which happens fairly often. Just as the Star Wars Jedi games have done an excellent job of putting players in the shoes of a force-wielding Jedi warrior, so too does Outlaw succeed in successfully letting you play the role of a quick-thinking, smooth-talking, if fairly unexperienced, spacefaring criminal. On a yeah, should have just did a better job with the aesthetics, though. It's like, come on, man. On a more zoomed-out level, the reputation system shines as well. As Kay deals with the different syndicates of the galaxy's outer rim, she makes plenty of difficult decisions, which in turn impact where she stands with those factions. That has both gameplay and narrative consequences, with the end result being a system that contributes significantly to bringing the game's scoundrel fantasy to life. Credit where credit is due, Star Wars Outlaw's reputation system is an excellent marriage of narrative and game design. Okay. And yet, in spite of the fact that Outlaws does successfully nail the, well, Outlaw vibe that it's trying to go for, as a gameplay experience, it's so often a frustrating one. One of the biggest reasons for that is the moment-to-moment -moment game feel just isn't great. Movement feels clunky, parkour and traversal feel stiff and slow, and animations are often glitched. Just the simple act of moving, just like the division. moving around when Kay is on foot feels surprisingly clunky, which is an issue that's further compounded by the game's lack of technical polish. More on that in a bit. When even the simplest of actions so often just don't feel right when you've got your hands on the controller, it's hard to be having fun with the game. Certain specific aspects of the gameplay also feel a bit underbaked. Take, for instance, the aforementioned traversal mechanics, which take the form of Uncharted-style climbing, but somehow end up feeling even more restrictive, to the point of almost feeling like just a little more than a series of QTEs. Then, there are the game's stealth sections, which combine all the AAA stealth tropes that we're familiar with, with annoyingly inconsistent enemy AI. The progression mechanics thankfully do feel more fleshed out and rewarding. As an action-adventure title, Star Wars Outlaws takes a pretty lean and focused approach in this area, but from Kay's equipment to her blaster, from her speeder to her ship, the Trailblazer, there are enough meaningful upgrades for players to chase. Okay. Frankly though, if those were the biggest gameplay issues Star Wars Outlaws had, it would still be a better game than it is now because one of its biggest failings comes in the form of some shockingly dated design decisions. Nothing exemplifies that better than the amount of insta-fail sections in the game. Star Wars Outlaws isn't a particularly good stealth game, as I've mentioned, so to force players to engage with those mechanics in sections that punish you with instant failure if you don't seems like a particularly poor decision, the kind that you don't expect to see a major AAA developer making in today's day and age, especially not one of massive entertainment's caliber. Need a distraction, Nyx. Oof. Those unnecessary gameplay restrictions feel even more frustrating when juxtaposed against the level of freedom that She's the game encourages some... elsewhere. On a He's got some splinter cell mechanics. Micro level, for instance, you do often get more than one way of dealing with situations. From using Nyx's help to distract or incapacitate foes to utilize... I feel like this could be a game you could wait on to go on sale to get optimized, like a lot of Ubisoft games, right? Uh, I sure am not going to buy it. It'd be something I'd get on Ubisoft Plus, though I've never, ever subscribed to that before. But if I did, it'd be like, okay, I got this and some other games I haven't beaten. We'll do it all in one go. Utilize the different modules of your blaster to combining shooting and fisticuffs in equal measure. On a more zoomed out level, meanwhile, the open world design impresses in more ways than one, chief among them being how unformulaic it feels. I, fi I figured that that would Rather happen. than taking a modular cut and paste approach, Star Wars Outlaws open world instead feels a lot more organic than you'd expect, with the game having plenty of tricks up its sleeve to allow you to lead up from distractions to distraction as you explore its interstellar map. The more natural flow of exploration, rather than simply following markers or going down a list of quests, does elevate the open world side of the experience, if nothing else. There's also a healthy variety of side activities on offer, including plenty of space flight and combat gameplay, which can also be quite fun. 
Movement in space, in fact, feels as tight and responsive as K's on-foot movement feels clunky, which incidentally just makes the latter's issue seem to stand out that much more. And yes, it's not just the gameplay side of Star Wars Outlaws that's more than a little rough around the edges, which, sadly, is a problem that modern AAA releases are no strangers to. Mm -hmm. Lip syncing issues, audio bugs, shoddy hit detection, muddy draw distances on the PS5, animation glitches, noticeable frame rate drops. I've experienced all of these technical issues and more in my time with Star Wars Outlaws. Thankfully, nothing that I've encountered has been game breaking, but the problem that I have had have been more than annoying enough to stand out, especially when put together. Yeah. Star Wars Outlaws does have its strengths. It's surprisingly organic open world and how it encourages exploration, its fun swashbuckling story, how effectively See, it captures honest. the scoundrel fantasy. But ultimately, the game feels just a little too rough. From its technical issues to its inconsistent writing, from some of its dated design decisions to the clunky game feel that pervades the entire experience, this just feels like a game that needed another year in the oven. I'm going to be playing plenty more of Outlaws in the days and weeks ahead, being the hopeless Star Wars sicko that I am, but in the state that the game exists in right now, I'm not sure that I'm going to have more fun with it than I will with the toy lightsaber that I bought. Hey, did you know that we at Gaming both upload new videos every day? Stick around! See, I like this guy because he's honest. I knew he would tell the honest truth. So I, I figured it'd be about a, you know, maybe probably not a six. It could probably be a seven or so. But he, I know he would just give the honest reviews about, you know, aspects in the game. And I felt like the game is rushed and it shouldn't have came out till next year. Uh, but there y'all have it, you know. And then, you know, there's the stuff down here. Uh, screen ran. Uh, how disappointing. They're going to give the game an eight. And say all those positive things about it remember this is the um company that had that activist that went in and and said uh lacking in inclusivity and diversity and we kind of like get out of here we all know that's nonsense but yeah like subscribe y'all can like this type of content uh glad to cover this and um let y'all know what's going on and give y'all a good review oof come on man what's going on here that, that that's what you needed right there on on the uh cover and you should have uh, delayed the game till like at least next spring and release it optimized and better but this is what happens today right you know right just shut on great franchises all right y'all peace out have a good day